Hey, thanks very much. Everybody hear me okay? So as Kat said, my name's uh, Robert Ryan Silva, but we're all friends here, so you're welcome to call me Rob. Uh, I work for a company that's called Development Alternatives Incorporated, or DAI. Uh, DAI is an international development company, and what that means is we're engaged by donors, usually the foreign aid agencies of developed country governments, like the US Agency for International Development, or the UK's Department for International Development, uh, we're engaged by them to implement projects that build the capacities of people and institutions in developing countries. And I run an initiative inside the organization called the DAI Maker Lab. Uh, and so I'm charged with using tools and approaches from what you and I would think of as the maker community uh, and applying those to building hardware and building people's capacities to build hardware in support of those development projects. So when you talk about uh, maker approaches to hardware, the critique that you frequently hear is that, uh, yeah, this stuff is great for building prototypes, uh, and that's nifty, and it's maybe even kind of useful, but it's not actually all that important because it's still just as hard as it ever was to go from that prototype to a mass manufactured product. And I'd like to push back on that a little bit because I think it's a false dichotomy. Uh, that's sort of saying that either you have a, a prototype, you have something that's rough, unfinished, that has value really only in it that it pushes you closer to mass manufacturing, or you have end-use hardware, and the end-use hardware comes off of manufacturing lines with a few thousand of its friends. Uh, in, when in fact, the same stuff that makes it easier for us to make the prototypes, the modular electronics, the uh, digital fabrication tools, the open source code bases and libraries, the ecosystem services like small run PCB manufacturing. All of that also makes it possible for us to build end use hardware in small quantities, one, 10, 100. Uh, and that's something that we couldn't really cost effectively do 10 or 15 years ago. And that is important, it is a big deal uh, because if uh, mass manufacturing is the only way that we have to apply hardware to a problem, then the only problems that get hardware applied to them are the ones that look like they're going to repay the capital investment on mass manufacturing. And so uh, if, if your problem doesn't look like that, or if you as a, a user of a technology don't look like uh, the uh, person that a, an investor, in a VC in San Jose wants to see, then you're not going to get technology to apply to your problem that fits your particular situation with a business model that's going to work for you. So any other road that we have to apply hardware to problems is actually a pretty big deal, and particularly in the context of developing countries where a lot of people and problems don't look like what's going to make that guy in San Jose feel comfortable. So, uh, and this is what I do, I, uh, uh, I do things like give classes in, to small nonprofits in Cambodia on building hardware that furthers their missions, to do things like uh, collect data for advocacy. Uh, I've done stuff like building uh, flood early warning systems for small municipalities and NGOs in Central America and Southeast Asia. Uh, but right today, what I want to talk to you about is some work that we're doing right now in Indonesia that I think you're going to find kind of interesting. Uh, so we implement a number of projects in Indonesia. Uh, one of them is called IUWASH Plus. It's a USAID-funded project uh, that works to provide access to water and sanitation services for urban communities in Indonesia with an emphasis on the urban poor. And so a lot of what they do is working with water utilities to build their institutional and technical capacities. So you can imagine if you're a water utility, there's a lot of data that you'd like to have about what's going on in your network at any given time. And a utility here in the US or in Europe, or in fact, in some of the better funded utilities in Indonesia, have access to a lot of hardware that can give them a lot of data about what's going on in their network at any given time. If you're not such a well-funded utility, however, you have to go a little bit more old school. So this is how they, uh, they collect the data on water pressure in a town called Bekasi, which is on the outskirts of Jakarta. Uh, they've got 20 of these analog gauges spread throughout the, the town. Uh, wherever pipes go above ground, they stick on a gauge. And the way they get the data from these uh, is somebody jumps in a car once a week with a notebook, and they write down the readings from each of the gauges, and they come back. 
And that's important because it'll tell you if you have a catastrophic pipe failure in the last week. It'll tell you if you have a creeping pressure problem that might indicate you've got a major new leak and gives you some indication of where you might start look, looking for that. It doesn't give you information that would help you operate your network better on a day-to-day -day basis. It doesn't tell you, for example, that the lowest pressure part of the network had high enough pressure at 8.38 this evening uh, that you could turn a couple of the pumps off, uh, save non-trivial amounts of electricity, uh, save wear and tear in the system from overpressurization, and save treated water from going into the system. Because we know that at least 40% of that water does not come out again through a meter, a working meter anyway. Uh, that's called non-revenue water. It's a major uh, concern for financial st sustainability for any water utility anywhere in the world. So it's uh, useful and has a dollar value to have real-time pressure information from around your system. And fortunately, from a technical perspective, this is not a hard problem. You can go on to Alibaba right now and you can buy for less than $15 a reasonably robust pressure transducer um, that's the same gauge, uh, that's made to go on the same gauge pipe uh, as the analog uh, uh, versions. Uh, and that's a uh, admirably linear five volt sensor. You can plug that into the ADC of your microcontroller of choice, bolt on some power and communications, and hey presto, you have a remote water pressure telemetry system. Uh, and so uh, we built a uh, uh, proof of concept prototype of this, uh, it, which I called Maytal on the grounds that Toots and the Maytal sang pressure drop. I'm more of a clash guy myself, but uh, that didn't seem like as good a name. Fortunately, I will not be naming the devices that actually end up in the field. Because the cool part of this story is that Indonesia actually has quite a large, robust maker community. And we held a series of maker meetups uh, in three towns in Java, uh, three pretty big cities in Java, um, to get to know that, those maker communities and to introduce ourselves and, uh, so that they could better understand how we work. And there were three big takeaways that I got from these meetups. The first was that the technical capacity of these communities is really very high. Uh, they, they had a lot of knowledge and they, they uh, knew how to apply it. Um, they were also very entrepreneurially spirited. Um, they had a lot of ideas of uh, how they could uh, uh, market some of the hardware that they were doing. They had a lot of, of thoughts about how they might start businesses around hardware but they didn't actually have really clear paths to market. It wasn't obvious how they were gonna be able to monetize those skills that they had. So on the one hand, we have a set of stakeholders in the form of water utilities around Indonesia that have a need that's readily addressable with hardware. And on the other hand, we have a maker community that is more than capable of addressing that need and that is interested in getting paid uh, to make hardware that solves problems. So we proposed to USAID a three-phase program for taking these two great tastes and putting them together. And phase one was just that proof of concept prototype, uh, confirming that there were sensors that were available that could be had uh, that could be made to uh, uh, bring us data that was of interest and, uh, and could be used by those water utilities. So we did that, that, that went out to, to Indonesia and was tested in Makassi. Phase two was kicked off when we gave a small grant to a Jakarta makerspace called Makedonia. And Makedonia is serving as a sort of open hardware facilitator for this activity. They've convened a group of makers around this problem and using funds from the grant uh, and facilitation help from IOWASH, uh, they are going to a few different utilities uh, initially in Java to uh, get to know those utilities, kind of embed in them, understand how those utilities operate, and to do some co-creation work, some uh, user-centered design work around this device. Uh, so though that uh, took place in August. Uh, they had some very successful uh, co-creation sessions around that, and they are now, have now come back to Makedonia to work on uh, field prototypes, stuff that will actually get tested on site at those uh, water utilities. After some testing and iteration, uh, we expect to have a design that everybody's happy with. Once that happens, that will get published to GitHub, uh, and we will kick off phase three of this, which will involve us actually, uh, so the IOWASH project, 
giving three to four contracts to these makers to then take that and replicate it in other water utilities around the country so that we can both uh, sort of prime the pump with commercial contracts for doing this, we can further build the evidence base that this is cost effective, uh, but also test out some business models and see what's going to work best in not. So the idea here is that we're going to emerge from this with a, uh, a coterie of makers, of maker uh, small companies, mom and pop hardware shops, uh, that are able to, to, to uh, go to other utilities around the country and say, this is viable, we can show that it's cost effective, we can show that it works, it works in this utility and that utility. We were on the team that helped design this and moreover, this is open source hardware. And I think that this is a key part of that value proposition that they're going to be selling. That uh, because you're not going to want to uh, purchase hardware from an artisanal hardware maker if you're concerned that if that person gets hit by a bus uh, or goes out of business, that you're not going to be able to get that replaced, repaired, uh, or, or extended. Uh, so that's a key part of this. So this is happening right now. Schedules are made to be broken, uh, but uh, for right now, we're expecting that phase three to start in the first quarter of next year. Um, I think we're gonna be a little bit late. I don't think we'll be like Glowforge late, uh, but we're, we're falling behind a little bit and, and, and that's okay, I'm not concerned about that. If you would like to follow along with how that's going, uh, you can feel free to follow your social media of choice. Make Donia uh, often posts on their Facebook site in English. Uh, I'd say more than 50% of the time, but even when they don't, uh, Bahasa plays nicely with Google Translate. And then I actually, uh, I am admirably under time. So I'm gonna take uh, just a few seconds to ask you a favor on an unrelated note. So if any of you or anybody that you know has experience with uh, digital signal processing and you are interested in contributing to an open source project that really will get used to help stop dynamite fishing in the Philippines, please get in touch with me. We, we're, we have a really cool idea, uh, but we don't have the whole suite of technical capability to do that. So uh, if you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them at breaks or after the, the summit. Uh, thank you, or feel free to drop me a line on my email or uh, whatever else you like. Uh, thanks very much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of the summit. I hope you are too.